looked down and laughed. The Virgin Prune's final album. The Swan Song. Moon Look Down was released in the spring of 1986, which sadly saw the band breaking up soon after. The making of the album was an awkward and troublesome affair, mainly due to lack of finance. But really, the fact we were all starting to fall apart from the beginning of the recording sessions. The first recording session was in Dublin's Windmill Lane in late 1983. Then we picked that up again in the spring of 1984 in London's infamous Trident Studios and later completed the album 1985 between Rockfield Studios in Wales and STS Studios in Dublin. Of all the recording sessions, the two weeks we spent in London's Trident Studios in the spring of 1984 are by far the most vivid of my Moon Look Down memories. Trident Studios was in the center of London's Soho. At that time, Soho was a truly different place to the one it is today. Back in 84, London's Soho was a small and fucked up world of wheelers and dealers all-night jukebox cafes, sleazy strip clubs, sex shops, girls standing on street corners crashing into porn stars and faded rock stars, all lit in the seediest of red lights and neon. And we loved it so much. Soho and Soft Cell, they sort of go together. Dave Ball from Soft Cell was the album's production maestro. And in the spring of 84, Soft Cell themselves were starting to self-implode and fall apart. Of a vague memory, a mad memory of Mark Almond calling in during the recording of the vocals for Deadly Sins. He arrived at the studio frantically excited by what he was hearing, babbling compliments a hundred miles an hour. He so adored what we were doing, then quickly ran off in search of 99 ice creams for all the band members, along with invites to see him later that evening perform in the Bat Cave. Then there was the recording session with Jim Thurwell, the infamous musician behind the band Fetus, a.k.a. You've Got Fetus on Your Breath, slash Scraping Fetus Off the Wheel. I'd known Jim Thirlwell since the early 80s and invited him to play saxophone on the tracks Day of Ages and Deadly Sins. Jim was, and still is, an amazing and genius improvisational musician, a man of many destructive musical talents. He fell into the two tracks with perfectly fucked up precision, capturing the brokenness and angst of the two songs capturing the sound and the art of a band falling apart. The last big moment of the Virgin Prunes. Thank you, Jim. And that, my dear friends, is a flashback memory from the 